looks like a bunny. Or maybe a kangaroo. Oh, hi. Have you ever had fun just looking up at the clouds and seeing what forms they take? Have you ever wondered how they form and why they take different shapes on different days? Well, let's find out. So what is a cloud? A cloud is a visible group of water droplets floating in the atmosphere above the surface of the Earth. When billions of water droplets group together, they become visible clouds. I have a friend at the Virginia Air and Space Center who knows a thing or two about clouds. His name is Richard Biles. Well, hi, Evan. I'm glad you could come to the Virginia Air and Space Center today. And I want to talk to you about clouds and how clouds are formed. Now, clouds are very neat, very necessary for life because clouds give us rain and pure water. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any water to drink or to grow our crops. So clouds form when water in the air moves upwards. And when it moves upwards, it gets lower and lower pressure and expands, and that makes it colder. When it gets colder, then all these little water droplets that are in the air, all the water vapor, turns into droplets, and they hang on to small dust particles and other things and become little droplets and reflect white and we can see them as clouds. All the different kinds of clouds we have are only water vapor in the air. And so our water vapor is very important to us and when that little, little ball of water droplet gets big enough, it falls out. And what's that called? Hmm. I know, I know, rain. That's right, precipitation. It comes out as snowflakes, sleet, hail, snow, or rain. So and we're going to make a cloud here at, uh, by using something very, very cold called liquid nitrogen. Whoa. Now, the liquid nitrogen that I have in here is 196 degrees centigrade or Celsius below zero. For those of you who's still stuck on Fahrenheit, that's 321 degrees below Fahrenheit. So that's so cold. <laughs> That's so cold that it is going to freeze this water, make vapor, and make a cloud. Now I have the water warmed up here in a wok. Now we're going to make a cloud by using liquid nitrogen, but liquid nitrogen is so cold, before we start, we must use our safety gloves to make sure we don't burn ourselves or give ourselves frostbite. Now the liquid nitrogen you cannot see, it is clear and uh, it's just as clear as water is. I mean, you can see that it's, it's a liquid in there, but when we get ready to pour it in here, what will happen, will, it will boil because it will turn back into a gas. When it boils, it's going to take that water with it and make water vapor in a cloud. So what you're going to see now is the water vapor coming out and making a really big cloud. So Evan, what do you think about that? We've just made a cloud in the museum. Wow, you made a cloud in a wok? That's a homemade cloud. Okay, Evan, I want to say one more thing. You know that clouds are sometimes come down to the ground. Clouds on the ground are called fog. And we can make a fog bank here and see fog being made by pouring the rest of this liquid nitrogen out onto the ground. Here we go. Look at that fog. That's the same cloud that is in the sky, but it's on the ground. I never thought of fog like that. Fog is just a cloud on the ground. See you later, Evan. Thanks for coming. Wow, that was fun. Now let's explore clouds a little more. Clouds can be divided into two general categories, layered and convective. These are named stratus clouds and cumulus clouds. Stratus means layer in Latin. Cumulus means piled up in Latin. These two cloud types are divided into three more groups by their altitude, or how high the cloud is. Clouds can be broken up into three basic altitude groups or categories. Low clouds have bases below 2,000 meters. Middle clouds have bases between 2,000 and 6,000 meters. And high clouds have bases above 6,000 meters. Within the different altitude ranges, a number of different types of clouds can exist. You can think of them as players on a team. Each team member has a different name. And now, you're starting five for the low cloud team. Stratus, Nimbostratus, Cumulus, Stratocumulus, Cumulonimbus, and your sixth man, Fog. And now for your mid-level team, Altocumulus, 
Clouds not only come in all those amazing shapes, but they also come in a variety of different colors. The color of a cloud tells us what's going on inside the cloud. Clouds form when warm air containing water vapor is lighter than its surrounding air, and this causes it to rise. As it rises, it cools, and the vapor condenses out of the air as tiny droplets. To condense means to change from a gas or a vapor to a liquid. These tiny droplets of water are packed together so tightly that the sunlight can't penetrate far into the cloud before it is reflected out. This gives a cloud its characteristic white color. Under certain conditions, the droplets may combine to produce larger droplets. Those large droplets may then combine to form droplets large enough to fall as rain. These larger droplets interact differently with light. Here's something for you to think about. Consider how much easier it is to see through a heavy rain than a heavy fog. It has to do with how much light is able to transmit between water droplets. The interaction of light with cloud particles of different sizes and amounts causes the array of shades from white to gray and even black. Other colors can occur naturally in clouds. A blue-gray color is the result of light scattering within the cloud. A greenish color occurs when sunlight is scattered by ice. A cumulonimbus cloud showing a greenish tint is a pretty good predictor of heavy rain. Now you're a cloud expert. So the next time you're lying in the grass identifying shapes in the clouds, call them by their real name.